Right, a little while ago I said that I'd show how to make a fire piston or a fire syringe on my Chinese mini lathe and this is the first of two videos showing the full process of making one of these. It's a survival tool for igniting a piece of char cloth and then starting a fire. And it works on the same principle as a diesel engine. And this fire piston again is made out of pieces of brass that I've collected up, scrap pieces of brass, and one stainless steel 8mm Allen bolt. And this is the one that I showed in that um, previous video working. And this is the one that I've just made today and is shown in this two part video. Right, to start with in making the fire piston, I have some scrap brass here and I've cut a length to about 165 millimeter. Now you can use any metal you like. Um, you can use stainless steel, aluminium or even copper pipe and I have found that the best diameter for the fire piston on the internal bore is about 10 millimeter. And the external diameter is about 12 millimeter. Now this piece of brass came from an old brass bed and what I do is I actually collect up any tubing that I can find, brass tubing off of furniture or um, any other scrap um, items and you'll find that if you store up a load of uh, brass or um, other pipe you'll have some really good uses for it. And I forgot to say that um, I did make um, a fire piston out of wood several years ago but I only managed to get it going once um, with the brass one that I've made um, here I find that this one is really reliable and goes off nearly every time. And I have actually seen some of them made out of polycarbonate or perspex so that when the fire piston is used you can actually see the flash of the ignition. And the most important thing about the tubing is that it must be a smooth bore. You mustn't have tubing that has a seam. And I have actually just ordered some stainless steel um, with these dimensions. It's very cheap to buy on eBay. So firstly, I'll put this in the mini lathe. And use my DCMT07024 insert tool to face off both ends. Bad out. And I've done the same on the other end. So the machining is finished on the pipe. This one has some sort of lacquer on it from when it was furniture, and I shall buff that off later so it becomes shiny brass. Or you can actually put it in the chuck and polish it down first with a bit of rough emery and then buff it up. So the most important thing about that bit of machining there is that the bore is actually left without a burr on the end there. And you can just check it with a sharp tool like that. So next I'm going to make up this bush here which actually blanks off the end of the pipe and that one has an 8mm thread and then I have a allen bolt that goes into that stainless steel one with a collar uh, put on the actual diameter of the allen bolt and then there's a fibre washer on that which is screwed home and that actually seals the end for the compression on the fire piston. So I have a scrap piece of brass here, as long as it's bigger than the diameter of the tube then you can actually use it to make the end.
and I'm actually turning this diameter down here to actually fit in the bore of the tube which is about 10 millimeter and I'm going about about 12 mil deep about 395 10th out of a row. So it's a nice close fit, not too loose. It's probably about one or two thou undersized from the bore of the brass. So now I do a slight undercut at the back there on the shoulder and put a couple of grooves on the diameter for the Loctite 638. And next the core diameter for an 8mm thread. And if you have a short piece of bar in there, drill right the way through, but if not, drill quite deep so that you know that when you send the tap down, it's not going to bottom out at the end. So next I have an HSS 8mm spiral tap, and I think these are one of the best taps you can actually get, and I'll put a link below to them. And I'm using my 80mm self-centering um, four-jaw chuck and that holds on the square of the tap and prevents it spinning 
and I'm going to let the tap go in about 25 millimeter which is the full length of the threads on there because I know that the drill depth was much deeper than that if you've bored right the way through you can just let it go right the way through and I'll use a bit of spray oil on that you can actually just run it dry on brass and with these spiral taps you don't have to keep reversing it you can just go straight the way down and the swarf will clear itself And that's the great thing about having the VFD, you can just go straight into reverse. So now I'll pull that one out and part that off. I haven't got much to hold on because there's an angle here. If it was a piece of straight brass, I could just pot it off normally, but I'll turn it around the other way because there's not much of a diameter to hold on. And I'll part it off this way round. I'll just check the center height on that one. It's a bit high. That's spot on. So I'm going to leave a shoulder width of about 7mm. And then just face that one off to clean up. So that's the end part finished and that will go in the pipe like that. I use a stainless steel 8mm allen bowl and a fibre washer and screw that one into that part. and screw it right home so that the fiber washer meets the face of the um, component here so now it looks like that you might have to just put it in the vise like i did there to tighten that one up and now i saw the end of the stainless steel bolt off so it's flush with the end face of the actual brass here
then just flatten off the face there with the disc sander. So the Allen bolt is nice and flush with the end of the brass there and then I can just put it back in the vise there and remove the Allen bolt. And then just buff off the sharp edges on the actual Allen bolt. So now I'll just place the brass tube there and I'm going to use some Loctite 638. I haven't got the nozzle on the bottle of the Loctite 638 so I use a stick and put that into the grooves. It must fill the grooves um, that you've done on the lathe or on the um, part. So put it all round like that and cover the end face as well. and push that one home just get some tissue to wipe off the excess and if it's cold weather you can actually just use a um, small torch like this to warm it up a little bit not too much just enough to warm it up you can still touch it and that will make the Loctite 638 go off much faster and then you can actually check to see that you've got a good seal by putting the fibre washer on the allen bolt screwing that one home again Tighten that one up. You can put a bit of um, silicon grease on the um, fibre washer and then you can put this end in your mouth here and suck on it as hard as you can. If there's no air coming through then it's a really good seal. And I can feel that's really good. No air coming through at all. And now I know that's ready for use. So next I've bought out a piece of brass like this to actually fit the allen bolt head and that's to make the stand for the fire piston so when you put it down on the table or whatever you won't mark it. And um, that one there now I can actually glue that on with Loctite 638. And you can actually make these so they're a tight fit on the Allen bolt. I haven't, I've made mine about two thou loose and that's fine for Loctite 638. Just to cover the bore and the Allen bolt around the diameter. This one isn't to seal it or anything, it's just to hold it onto the Allen bolt head. and then just wipe the excess out of that allen bolt and you can actually put this back up in the lathe like it is now and um, machine off this face so it's actually flush with the allen bolt head if you want to and you can make these whatever diameter you like you can even make them out of PVC or something different if you want
and that one's solid now. And then I put the tube back up on the lathe and put a live centre in this end and knurl this diameter around here. And you can actually make this component out of a solid piece of brass all round but I actually like to use the allen bowl, it saves a lot of time on threading or whatever. And I like the fact that it's steel inside the ignition bore. And I use my live centre which I got from Banggood. This one has um, different ends in it so you can put whatever end you like in it. And I've chosen one that fits the Allen key head nicely. In fact that one's not running very true in that head. So I'll change the end on that one. And I'll put this flathead one in. So it's just resting on the end face. And that gives it a bit more support for the knurling. And because it's only a short depth, I'm gonna just wind it down by hand. And that'll be all right. And then just deburr that one. I've put a nice radius on that one. So that's that part finished. 